Well, good evening, everybody. It's evening time already here on Monday. We're getting going. There was no freight for us to pick up today during the day, but we do have a load to pick up tomorrow. It's another one in Kenora. We're gonna go grab another one of those, but I'm gonna get a head start today so that I can be there tomorrow morning, get unloaded tomorrow afternoon, and be ready to go for whatever they have next for me. So first, I have to go grab a trailer and bring that to Kenora with me. I'll probably, I don't even know if I'll go all the way to Kenora today yet on Monday. I might wait until tomorrow, but we'll get at least to Prada, Manitoba. I'm kind of thinking that's where we might stop. We'll see. See how I feel once we get going. Let's go get our trailer first. This highway's pretty busy today. I'm bobtailing, heading on my uh, way to the yard to go grab my trailer. Probably gonna grab a 53 foot step deck. I prefer to pull the step decks, they just ride smoother for me. Sometimes the, uh, the flatbeds, the aluminum flatbeds, can, can get a little hop in them and it sort of shakes the truck as you're going down the highway if you're empty. It flexes in the center. That's just me though, maybe other people don't notice that. I also prefer the step decks because it's a little bit lower, a lower surface area to work with. The place where we load up, like where I'm loading tomorrow and I load there so often, they have strict rules that I'm not allowed on the trailer at any time on a flatbed if it's four feet high off the ground. But a step deck is underneath that threshold, so I'm actually allowed on the deck of the trailer as long as I'm on the lower section. That way I can put my tarps on and work with my load a little bit better. So it's just an easier uh, platform for me to work with with what I haul. So we'll see. If there's no step decks available, I'll grab a flat. got our trailer here trailer 130d step deck now I just charged the trailer with air there shooting air from my truck into my trailer I have the truck off and I'm listening for air leaks all I hear is literal crickets so that's good check to make sure we got good tire pressure in here Mud flaps. I'll have to turn on the signals and brake lights yet and walk around again. Because I forgot to turn those on, so... I don't always work smarter, sometimes I work harder. Right. Might as well check my truck. Tires while I'm back here. Okay, gotta roll up those landing gear yet. And then uh, we'll be good to go. This is a riser that uh, we have strapped into here. I'm actually gonna move that and put it at the back over there or even up here. I'll probably just put it up here for now. I won't need it up here. I don't like the way this is on here like this. There's nothing wrong with that really. It's not going anywhere, but uh, technically if that strap were to loosen, this thing could shift back and forth, right? So I'm gonna loosen that strap, flap it up there flat, tie it down there, and uh, and we'll be good to go. In the meantime, I'll check my signals and brake lights as well. This video won't be, won't be very long today because it's not gonna be a very long day. We only got going after supper, so I'm sorry if this one's only around 10 minutes long. I try to make my videos about 20 to 30 minutes long. Like between 20, 25 minutes is like the sweet spot for me. That's where I think is the best. But...
So tying it down like this is much better. You see the strap then is between this and this, which prevents it from moving this way or that way. Also, the downward pressure on the deck and the friction of the deck prevents it from going this way and this way. And these straps here and on that side prevent it from going side to side as well. It's much safer there than back here. I don't know who put it back here. I mean, I've seen it done that way many times. Nothing ever happened. But uh, if the deck is empty anyways, you may as well just secure it a little better. Just take that extra mile, or go the extra mile, so to speak, and make sure that uh, you're not going to lose this thing. Because that would be... Uh, that would really hurt if that went through someone's windshield. I don't know, it's never happened to me, but I'm just guessing. I think it's an educated guess, in my opinion. It could hurt. Let's make sure that doesn't happen on my watch. Okay, so I put the brake lights on, the signal's on. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's just check the signal inside of the trailer here. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. There we go. This one's working. Sure is. All right. Let's get out there and uh, I'll probably, I want to say I'll probably end up in Prada, Manitoba. It's like halfway to Kenora. Eh, we'll see how I feel. We'll see how I feel. Might go all the way. Sleep in Kenora. Doesn't really matter either way.
Prada, Manitoba. This is my first option to stop. I think I'm just gonna grab fuel here. Dude, my trailer is not gonna make it around you. You're in the way. to keep their batteries alive, you know? Some people have CPAP machines and stuff, they gotta keep running. But when you're at a truck stop at night, uh, especially if it's a big packed one where you know trucks are sort of facing each other across the driveway, uh, it is kind of irritating when someone has their lights on and shining right into your cab. It doesn't bother some people, of course it bothers me because uh, I have pet peeves, but not just because I have pet peeves, because I, I'm trying to set a better example here on the internet for drivers coming to Canada and the US to drive, who may not be familiar with the etiquette on North American highways and truck stops, and also to other people who are maybe just oblivious and maybe have never been taught the etiquette of the road. So I try to throw these little pointers in there in my videos. I grew up in this industry. I grew up around it. I grew up very conscious of the etiquette involved in driving a truck. How to how to drive and how to treat other drivers. How to signal other drivers turning your lights off then back on when it's safe to come back in. Never using your high beams in someone's mirror. Uh, when you're at a truck stop, immediately turn your headlights off. Uh, when you park, don't shine your lights into someone else's cab. And stuff like that, you know? It's, it's a lot to do with lights at night. They're not like written rules or laws or anything, but it is a certain etiquette that, you know, there there is a trucking culture here in Canada and the United States. There's a trucking culture. And the more time goes on, it seems that that culture is either being diluted or slowly dying or not being passed on. I'm going to go with the last one, say that it's not being passed on. There's too many of us drivers out here who are, and trainers, who are training people how to drive, but not teaching them the etiquette of the road as well. You can drive a truck and follow all laws and regulations, not get in any trouble. But there are certain things that if you do them, it's just going to irritate people around you. Certain things are just rude to do. Sort of like, you know, some people need to be taught to only take up one parking spot in the truck stop. These are kind of things that, you might think, oh, why would we even need to tell people this? Like, parking straight. Why would we need, that's just common sense. Well, to some people, it clearly isn't. And that some is becoming a lot. And this is becoming a problem in Canada, where people don't know certain things that come to us who have been here forever and doing this forever as common sense. It's just not common sense to them, because no one has taught them. So that's what I'm here for. I'm a Canadian truck driver. I drive across Canada and the United States. I grew up in this. This is all I know. I may be right. I may be wrong. But I'm going to try to teach people to be the best driver out there they can be. Especially if they're new. You know, there's a lot of people who come here from overseas. From different places, different cultures. And Canada has always been a welcoming place to everybody. And uh, the thing is, if they're not told... They'll never know. Things can be very different where they come from. So by sharing my story here on the internet, I'm hoping to improve trucking in general across Canada and maybe across the U.S. too as well. But especially up here in Canada, this is where I'm home. my home base is. This is where I grew up. This is where I pay taxes. This is my home. And trucking is my life. 
and I see my channel here as a way to sort of protect that trucking culture, to revive it, and to sustain it, and to maintain it, and to spread it. I hope that makes sense. So, pay attention. I got some pointers for you every now and then. I don't know everything. Sometimes I'm wrong. But uh, if we all work together and come together, we can keep this trucking culture we have here intact. 458 liters. I've decided. We're gonna go to Kenora and sleep there. That way I'm right, pretty well right down the street from them. We can get up tomorrow and start our day there. It's an extra hour. We made it to Kenora. Made it to my nice quiet parking spot here. And it's a super moon tonight. Did you know this? It looks no different than any other night. If TikTok wouldn't have told me that it was a super moon tonight, I wouldn't have noticed or known. But here I'll show you. I know the camera doesn't do it justice because I can't zoom in far enough. But uh, that's, that's the super moon. And I thought it was supposed to be blue. The super blue moon, the blue super moon. It looks just like a regular full moon to me. Maybe a little bit bigger. A little clearer. If that makes sense. Clearer. I don't know. But here we are. We're waiting for the morning when we'll get loaded. We're in a nice parking spot under the lights. I feel comfortable here. I'll have a good night. But look at this. This is disappointing. We were talking a few clips back about etiquette. Um, not littering is proper etiquette. Don't just throw your garbage on the ground like that. That's not acceptable. Take it to a garbage bin. Keep it in your truck until you get to a garbage bin. Every truck stop has them at the pumps or around the building. A lot of truck stops even have these uh, garbage cans around like the parking area don't just throw it on the pavement like that that makes the rest of us look really bad and uh, it makes these truck stops look really bad and Canada's a beautiful country let's keep it that way let's make sure that we don't destroy this country and make it look like trash So there's your last tip for the day. So tomorrow morning, we'll go, we're gonna throw some lumber on this trailer. We're gonna put a tarp over it. And we're gonna go down and see our good friends in Brainerd, Minnesota. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching today, everybody. I know, bit of a short video, but we started after supper, like I explained earlier, so you have to cut me a little bit of a break. Tomorrow will be a better video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hope you tune in. If you haven't already, if you're new here, hit subscribe. I drive truck across Canada and the United States. I'm based in Southeast Manitoba, which is a province in Canada, just north of Minnesota and North Dakota. So I live about 60 miles north of the US border or so, something like that, just barely into Canada, like the majority of Canadians. <laughs> We're called the weather stripping of America because we're all hugging the, the American border, begging for them to share some of their warmth with us in the winter time. But it's summer right now, so it's pretty hot. Like when I left home, it was 81 Fahrenheit. And for this whole weekend, it's what 80 Fahrenheit. So it gets pretty warm up here, too. Not like hot, but warm. To me, it's hot, but to a lot of you, that's just warm. So don't forget to subscribe, everybody. Keep your stick on the ice out there, which means pay attention. Keep your head up. Keep your head on a swivel. People are crazy on these highways. Make sure you're not one of the crazy people. Let's all make sure we are not the crazy people. And let's let the crazy people do their thing and uh, let's stay out of their way and let law enforcement 
catch up with them. <laughs> Eventually, everybody gets caught, okay? Eventually, everybody gets caught. Just make sure you're one of the responsible ones out there. I want all my followers and all of my audience to be the good people on the road. I want you guys all to be the upstanding citizens and upstanding drivers out here who take care of their trucks, take care of the truck stop parking lots, that they're not throwing garbage out all over the place, and that they're being respectful of other drivers. I know that's all of you, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.